Well, I have been so unexcited about talking about the team across the bay from your Giants, my fucking A's, that I have barely brought them up over the last several weeks. I wasn't sure we were covering them anymore. (laughs) We can do whatever the fuck we want here. We are (laughs) assholes, and this is our podcast, so whatever we want to do. I do want to bring up, uh, since we are talking about trade capital, Frankie Montas, who might be the most valuable pitching asset on the trade market. Or was. Well, I'll get to that. Uh, as uh, we've been talking about him since the beginning of the season, coming up to the trade deadline, what what his value would be, and it's only his value's only gone up in in terms of there's not much else out there in terms of front end starting pitchers, or at least you know number two or number three for a, a playoff bound team. But that that idea kind of hit the rocks a bit this week as. Montas left his last start versus the Mariners with shoulder tightness. And that led to an MRI this week, which led to a slow release of the results of that. Uh, They had the MRI on, I think it was Monday. And I don't think word actually came out until Wednesday that it was a strain of sorts, but it was not the worst case scenario. He is not going on the IL. He will miss his next start, but, He's officially day to day and they expect him to be, to be back soon, very soon. Um, so that is, I guess that is good news. Um, it's never good news to hear a pitcher having shoulder issues. Uh, that is, that can lead to long-term things that doctors cannot figure out. You know, we've, we've figured out the elbow essentially with the Tommy John surgery. That is something that has a, an incredible recovery rate, success rate. Shoulder issues are something that pitchers, uh, typically do not recover very well from eventually if, if it's major damage. Um, shoulders is just a, a complicated area of the body, I think is, is what it comes down to. And doctors have not mastered that. So I, I hate it anytime you hear about a, a shoulder issue with any pitcher, no matter what the severity, but at least it's a, a low, a, you know, a minor issue right now for Montas. He's not going to miss much time at all. So, we, so far we, you know, we'll, uh, A's fans will feel much better once we see him pitch another another game because uh, really that is all us A's fans have to look forward to is trading off more assets to rebuild this club from the ground up once again. So I think uh, the timing is not great, but at least we're still early. We're still three weeks, four weeks almost from the trade deadline. So he has time to have a couple of good outings and put that resume out there for for the bidders to come after him. And I think there will be lots of bidders out there. And that, that's what the A's were hoping for as this market has kind of dried up. Uh, he would be the, the top asset that people would be going after. So as you get big hitters, big ball clubs like the Yankees or whoever else um, in a bidding war for his services, that, that's what that's what the A's are looking for. The only other thing I wanted to bring up with my A's is I oft, often mention my favorite player ever, is Ricky Henderson uh, for many reasons is, is incredible feats on the field is one of the most exciting players I've ever seen, but also the stories off the field, just the hilarious stuff like framing his uh, first paycheck of a million dollars instead of <laughs> cashing it and thus screwing up the, the uh, budget department <laughs> at the A's. They weren't sure where that, why that check hadn't cleared and it was kind of confusing to him because it was on a wall in in his condo or wherever it was uh, lots of stories of that, but there is a new book that just came out last month by uh, Howard Bryant, which you'd know him. He was uh, one of uh, you'd recognize him from Ken Burns baseball. He was in the 10th inning, uh, both halves of the 10th inning. I believe he talked a lot about Barry Bonds is, is the subject matter he was dealing with, but uh, he wrote a book about Ricky just called Ricky, the legend Legend in Life of an American Original. And I just ordered that. It is coming in the mail tomorrow. So I will be uh, reading that. I'm a slow reader. So I was going to uh, uh, promise a book report at some point on this podcast, <laughs> but it might be a while before I, before I get through all that. But we'll see how that goes. But I'm really excited about this. It's funny because I've, I've been talking about this a few times, at least on this podcast. So I think there should be a movie or a documentary or something about about Ricky, and maybe this is the the book that people will, could base a screenplay off of. I'm hoping so. I'll report back on that soon enough. All right. Did you want to talk about the Fourth of July? 
Uh, we can. Yeah. I mean, the, the, there was an incident outside or actually inside of, uh, whatever it's called the Coliseum. I'll just call it if it's O.co or I forget what, whatever lane, whatever sponsorship. sponsorship. Yeah. Yeah. The Oakland Coliseum on 4th of July, uh, four fans were hit by bullet fragments is how it was described. They weren't shot. They were struck by bullet fragments that was apparently <clears throat> coming from celebratory gunfire outside of the stadium, uh, which is a terrifying idea. Um, just the idea of you're celebrating shooting your gun in the air, uh, somehow not understanding that those bullets do come down eventually. <laughs> they um, do, unless you're in the movies. Yeah, the thought process is just unbelievable. And then the terrifying thing is that it hit not one person it hit four people so i can't imagine what that what that scene was like so just a i don't know it's just a weird story a weird fourth of july of course you know they're in chicago there was the mass shooting in highland park which i actually know four people that live within a half mile of where that occurred none of them were at the parade thank god but uh way too close to home this this shit is so crazy and the, the idea that you know people are just shooting guns even straight up in the air just because they're fired up about the fourth of july is unreal um we're not a political podcast or anything but we could go on diatribes again or for or against gun control it's not, not worth our time necessarily but unreal that this is this is the world we live in right now yeah